Understudies, episode one. My name's David Litt. I used to be a speechwriter for President Obama, and I want to tell you a story from one of my first months at the White House. The White House, the White House, the White House. The chief speechwriter at the time, John Favreau, called me in my office and he said, David Litt, it's Favs. Hey, Favs. Hey, man. So Betty White's turned to nine years old, and NBC's doing this thing with these celebrities where they wish her a happy birthday. It's a quick little 30 second video message. I don't know. Anyway, you're pretty funny. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, no one else wants to do it. So do you want to give it a shot? David. This is my Gettysburg address. Okay, David, I'll, I'll take that as a yes. This was the most important thing Barack Obama would ever say. We were going to have the president fill out a birthday card, and then you would hear his voice as a voiceover, and he would say, Dear Betty, you're so young and full of life, I can't believe you're turning 90. In fact, I don't believe it. Please send a copy of your long-form birth certificate to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. So we feel good about the joke, but we need to figure out some way for the video to end. And so for that, we're gonna have the president pretend to listen to the theme song from The Golden Girls, which is Betty White's most popular show. And then finally on Friday, I get the call. Head on over to the West Wing. The Oval Office. I did not black out. I can remember this very clearly. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see the Emancipation Proclamation. And I can feel the message that this document is sending through the room. I'm here because I freed the slaves? What are you doing here? And I look across the desk at the president and I realize he may also be wondering what I'm doing here. But I'm not worried because I have spent an entire week just practicing how to explain this one joke. And so I walk up to the Resolute desk and I look President Obama in the eye. I just say, uh, Betty White. 90 years old, video. Birthday card, NBC special, very funny. Esta bien? President Obama gives me kind of a confused look, but I'm not giving up yet. We have the joke with the headphones and it's gonna be great. I reach into my pocket and I pull out what looks like a hairball made out of wires. And now I have no idea what to do, so I just hand the whole thing to the President of the United States. And he untangles and untangles. Suddenly, President Obama says, if I'm going to bob my head in time to the music, I need to know what the music is. Does anyone here know uh, 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 the Golden Girls theme? And President Obama looks at Hope, and Hope doesn't say anything. So I look at Hope, and Hope doesn't say anything. So President Obama looks at me. I know exactly what I can do for my country. And I'm standing there in the Oval Office with the Emancipation Proclamation right behind me. And I look our Commander-in-Chief in the eye. And I say, Bum 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 bum, thank you for being a friend. Bum 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 bum. Travel down the road and back again. Something, something, you're a pal and a confidant. But he looks kind of amused, so I keep going. I'm like, and if you threw a party and invited everyone you knew. And that's when he gives me a look that's like, okay, president's time. But it works. President Obama bobs his head in time to the music, and NBC gets their special, Betty White gets her birthday card, and I leave my first ever Oval Office meeting with my head held high because I know that the President of the United States was just a tiny bit better at his job because I was in the room. Thank you for being a friend. Fa.